SliceofSciFi.com. Hey Slicers, this is George down here at Hypno Comics in Ventura and I'm hanging out with Dave Dorman. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's here in California with us. Yes, huh? <laughs> all the way from Chicago. Yep. So um, we're just going to talk about, uh, well, first, if you don't know Dave and his work, then um, we're going to give you a pass on revoking your nerd cards and all that sure. stuff. So uh, we're going we're gonna to talk with him for a little bit about some of the, the seminal work that he's done, uh, some of the great stuff that he's got coming up with Titan Books. Um, so we're just going to um, do that. We're going to hang out with Dave Dorman for a little while. Okay. So thanks for coming down. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Uh -huh. Pleasure good, to be here. First time you. here. It's a great shop. You and, like it? Uh, yeah, I do. Oh, all right. I do. Nicely uh, covered as far as uh, well-rounded material and, uh, you know. Try to be a one-stop shop. There yeah. you go. It's still clean, but, you know, we've only been here like a year and a half, so uh, give it some time. Well, you've <laughs> succeeded as far as what I look for in a shop. So. Oh, thank you. I so appreciate you're good. it. good. That means a lot to me, so. Um, Let's talk about like let's just start with your your background. I mean, um, okay. we've got a lot of lot of um, people from Slice and here at Hypno are a lot of new people to the medium, the format. Okay. You know, being that there's a lot of mainstream focus on what we do uh -huh. for a living now, um, which is great in my opinion. Um, so let's let's talk about a little bit like how you got into the business. Okay. You know, let's start let's start there. All right. Well, um, you know, I read comics as I was a kid. You know, I read. A lot of science fiction, a lot of fantasy. Okay. And so my my head has always been in sort of that other world. Uh, and uh, when I was younger, I really enjoyed looking at comics and enjoying the art. I very rarely read comics because the art has always fascinated me. Right. So it, it took me a few years to, to figure out that there were actually words in the balloons <laughs> and started reading them and you know getting the whole story rather right. than just looking at the art. So uh, I started my my art by just copying the comic drawings. You know, Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko and John Buscema and, and Jim Stranko. Yeah. You know, these guys from, from the late 60s. And uh, uh, that's how I, I learned a little bit about drawing uh, at that point. And that really um, inspired me to continue to do it. I really love to create. And so comic books has always been part of of my ingrained interest in art. So as I got older, uh, I got more uh, involved in the t different types of mediums, different types of, of artwork. And when I was in high school, I started to do some painting uh, along with my drawing. And from there, uh, it, I went to uh, one year of college uh, at Liberal Arts College in Maryland. Okay. But they were teaching more uh, fine art and gallery art, it what, and what I wanted to learn was illustration. So I left there and I went to the Joe Kubert Joe School, Kubert school right. which is in Dover, New Jersey. And at that time, it was a very small school. There was maybe uh, 40 students, and it was strictly line art and comic book style illustration. And I still had that dream that I wanted to be a comic book illustrator. And so I went, I went there for one year. It was the second year of the school in 78, <laughs> 1978. <clears throat> and I, I learned a lot. It was a great opportunity for me. Uh, it, it was wonderful to be in that uh, um, area where I had a lot of peers around me so that we could share. And then I had professionals who were my teachers that were able to give us a perspective of being a professional. Who were some of your and teachers then, there? Uh, uh, probably you wouldn't recognize the names, but there was- uh, We're gonna uh, educate these youngins. There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, Rick Estrada, who was a very um, uh, popular um, artist at, at, at the time. This would have been um, mid 70s to late 70s. Uh, Rick Estrada did uh, a lot of uh, war material for DC. Um, because the, the school was run by Joe Kubert, Joe, Joe. Joe would bring in a lot of his professional friends to uh, teach. So I had uh, uh, Bob Kaniger as my writing uh, teacher. He wrote almost all of the great uh, Our Army at War and, and Sergeant Rocks and right. Enemy Ace and, and those books. Uh, High Eisman, who was a, uh, um, a cartoonist, a, a newspaper strip cartoonist, um, 
Uh, Joe Kubert came in to teach uh, occasionally. Um, oh, let's see. Um, oh, there, there are many others, um, you know, most of which were working uh, artists or strip people at that time. Uh, so most of them didn't really have a name within the, the uh, comic book industry, mm. but they had names as illustrators or comic strip people. Got it. Okay. So we got a well-rounded uh, education in black and white line drawing and comic book style work. But as the year went on, I found I was happier doing single illustrations rather than continuous panel work. Right. And my painting, because I, I would paint after school, um, I do, I'd do the line drawing stuff at school and for the homework, but I still wanted to paint, so I still painted after school. And I was much more comfortable with that because that was a single illustration. Right, no sequential. Just, no, just tell a story with a single image. Yeah. Unfortunately, the school w wasn't teaching any color curriculum at all at that time. Now it's changed. Now the school has a wide variety of curriculum from painting to drawing to computer animation to standard animation, to a a anything that, that art entails. They're okay. very well-rounded now for uh, the technology and, and what's needed in the market. A lot but of back, digital. Well, yeah, a lot yeah. of digital stuff. Okay. But back then, you know, we're talking late 70s, you know, there wasn't all this digital stuff. Everything was still done traditionally. Yeah. And there were still a lot of us that wanted to do it. I mean, my classmates and the classmates in front of me were people like Tom Yates and Rick Veach and Tim Truman. Yeah. Tim Truman, I like Tim <coughs> Truman. Yeah, yeah. He, he did and, some of the old uh, work on the Star Frontiers role playing yeah. game and Grim Jack is yeah. good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like it. And yeah. um, uh, Jan Dersma, sure. who's doing Star Wars, and, and uh, Tom Mandrake, who's done a lot of good work for DC. Yep. Ron Randall, who created Trekker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of these guys were Steve Bissett, who I worked with on the uh, Aliens Tribes book. Uh, all of these guys were were within the our. our you know, one or two year um, uh, classes yeah. at the Kubert School. So, you know, it was a great time to be there. But because I found that I was happier doing color work and doing painting, um, what happened was the school didn't have much more to offer me because the black and white work wasn't the direction that I wanted to go. Right. So basically I, I talked to Joe at the end of, of the school year and he understood exactly where I wanted to go. If, if anybody chose to run a school and knew exactly w what they wanted to do to help mentor young guys coming up. He was the guy. He was very smart. He knew how to, to talk to um, educate people. Mm -hmm. uh, he could look at art and see exactly what was wrong with it. Yeah. But he didn't force his style on you. He just suggested things that might make it better. He was a great guy, a great teacher, and uh, um, you know he started this school 30 years ago, and it's still going still strong. Going, yeah. So he did something right. He's got some talented and, kids. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he, he certainly does at that. And uh, you know he he said you know straight to my face, he said we do not have anything else that we can teach you. You want to paint, and we can't give that to you. Yeah. So we do not want you to come back next year because it would just be a waste of your money yeah. and a waste of, of their time sure. teaching me. Well, yeah, so you got the, the irony of you're, you were doing the college and it was two fine arts yeah. for the, the comic book work that you wanted. And then you got to the comic book school right. and you hit the ceiling on what you wanted to do there. Well, I, I, <clears throat> I found what I wanted to do. It okay. set me on, on the path that eventually leads me to here. Okay. So instead of, instead of following um, my my desire, which was to do, be a comic artist. I followed my heart into what I wanted to do, which was basically be an illustrator. Illustrator, right. Yeah. So that set me on that path. So I, I left the Kubert School after the, the one year, and I just went home and got some part-time jobs and lived with my folks and just painted and drew as much as I could in my free time. Right. And eventually I built my portfolio, started to get a little bit better. You know, back in those days, there was no internet, so I would have to send out samples to <coughs> right. everybody. And uh, I went to shows, and I'd, I'd go to Atlanta, and I'd go to New York. Did the portfolio and reviews. I'd do the portfolio yeah. thing, and, and I'd meet 
lots of people and I met you know I had good friends from the school so I had contacts through them any of them editors that got you some work uh, no but <laughs> but they, they could point me to the editors that were looking for uh, artists good. and so eventually I, I got one job and I got another job and another job and you know within uh, Within about three years or, or four years of leaving the Cuber School, I was making a living at doing illustration. Uh, a lot of it was small stuff. I did a lot of goofy stuff like uh, uh, Robotech covers for Kamiko, yeah. you know, back in those days. And I, really? I, I have a bunch of those. I should yes, dig those I, out. I, 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 did, <laughs> yeah, I did probably about uh, 20, 25 covers for them in a, in a line drawing sort of manga technique. Yeah. Uh, I did uh, uh, various covers for Dark Horse before they made it big with uh, Aliens and, and uh, Star Wars. You know, I did Trekker covers. I did Mr. Monster. Uh, Mr. Monster was good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, whoever would hire me, you know, to work, I, I was making my breaks. I was trying to get as much exposure as possible. And then uh, in 1989, uh, because I had a background with Dark Horse, um, I had heard that they were going to do Indiana Jones. So I threw my hat in and I said I'd love to do some covers. Yeah. And they were they were happy with my work so they needed to send uh, some samples to Lucasfilm uh, for approval because they had to approve all the artists. And so th so I did a sample for them and, and sent they sent it along and and it came back as approved and that what that's what opened the door for me to start working with Lucasfilm. Yeah. And so Something important. It's a safe going town. On. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, a year later, when uh, word was uh, circulating that Dark Horse was going to get the Star Wars Star license, Wars rights, right? Yeah. You know, I made a couple of calls and said I'd be interested in doing some Star Wars covers. Yeah. Well, you know, it was Dark Empire, so it's Cam Kennedy and Tom Veach uh, yeah. doing the writing. Cam Kennedy, which we have right here. If, yep. If you guys have never read this or seen these gorgeous covers that Dave painted, I really highly recommend that you check them yeah. out. Uh, it's a great series as well. So It was a very good series. It holds up today. It does. It and, does. And uh, I'm real happy about that because that sort of relaunched the interest uh, for Star Wars material that came out about the same time as the Tim Timothy Zahn novels right. uh, that were uh, um, uh, in the mainstream bookstores. So this was opening up uh, a new generation of Star Wars to um, or a new generation of kids and reintroducing the adults to the possibility of what Star Wars could be. Well, yeah, because you've got um, this is like a, a kind of similar to what Dark Horse is doing with the current series. You know, they're mm -hmm. plopping the into, into the middle of the mythos and what, right. what happened over here that we didn't see in the movie. Dark Empire did mm -hmm. that with, with Luke. Right. Timothy Zahn did it with his novels in the Han and Leia front. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, uh, you know, I threw, I threw my head into the ring on that. And they got back to me and, and said, that, well, you know, Cam Kennedy was going to do the covers for these. And I said, okay. You know, I've loved Cam's work, and I was very excited to see that he was doing this. And so, you know, I, I stepped back, and uh, probably about a week later, um, I got a call and, uh, uh, from the editor, and he said, you know, we mentioned to Cam that you were interested in doing the covers. And he said, absolutely. <laughs> Let Dave can do the covers. He <laughs> said, great. He, said yeah. he said, I can't do a cover as good as Dave. And that really made me feel good. Right. Because, you know, like I say, I've been a fan of Cam's for just a long time. And for him to uh, step aside uh, to allow me, you know, to do that, that, that really meant a lot to me. And so that's how I got to do the covers for the Dark Star Empire. Empire. Yeah. yeah. And from there, you know, we went to Crimson Empire, uh, X-Wing, um, various other uh, Star Wars uh, books. Yeah. And, and so between Indiana Jones and, and Star Wars, it, it uh, got me into Lucasfilm. And I've been doing work with them for more than 20 years now. Now, this was 90s. Correct. Um, Non-sports cards were huge back then. Correct. 
I remember those things sound like hot because I, you it know, is big. I, there's I, about this, 10 years that, uh, yeah, the non sports card stuff was very hot in the industry. Yeah, yeah, and you did a lot of work on those. I did a lot of work on, on the non sports card stuff. I was involved in a lot of different uh, series. Uh, one of these days, I have to go back and look at my samples and make a list of uh, what I was involved <laughs> in. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, a couple of them really panned out to be uh, something a little bit more than just participating. Uh, in the card series. Uh, at one point, um, uh, Malibu Comics, which is now defunct, they were bought by uh, Marvel and then yes, and then put to death very quickly. And I forget the guy's name, and he was just in here like last week. Uh, the guy who owned it, Dave Ulbrich? I think it was Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he ran the, the company. Uh, anyway, they were making a real big push uh, at one point in the early 90s, yeah. and uh, the cards were big. So they asked me to do a full 90 card set of their heroes. And I said, sure, you know, why not? So it was a big amount of work. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it was cool to, you know, have a whole set of my own rather than have, you know, a three card set or a six card set in with everybody with else. With everybody else, right. Yeah. So that was really cool to do. So I did 90 cards for that. And um, uh, there was another project that I did that was um, for Skybox. And they wanted uh, a set of creators to come in, each creating a world, and then they were gonna take that and make a card game out of it, but also make a computer game that you could play that if you had the cards, it would accentuate the gameplay. Right. So it was sort of, uh, sort, of <coughs> sort of like mist, where you'd walk around the worlds and there'd be things that you could do, puzzles that you could do, and then the cards would have clues or, or do things that would, would help you through the game. Um, <coughs> so it was me and Brom and Julie Bell and Brian Stelfreeze and Dave McKean. I know, met Julie a couple times. Yeah. yeah, and so we all created uh, um, our various worlds. Yeah. And it was real fun, and, and it f that's really the first thing that got me thinking about what eventually would turn into Wasted Lands and my graphic novel Rail. Rail, yeah. Yeah, Which so. Which is great, by the way, and you should all buy it. Yes, buy two, <laughs> um, if you can find them. <laughs> yeah, they're out of print. Yes, they are. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, this has really got me into, you know, creating characters and, and putting them in, into a world that they could coexist. And even though I've changed a lot of stuff that was in that, it, it was called um, Skyborg, like Master of the Universe or something. <laughs> I, I can't remember. It was called Skyborg. If you, if you just uh, Google Skyborg, you'll probably come up with some, okay. some type of reference uh, for the game or for the cards. Um, so, you know, that back in 1994 maybe, um, uh, you started something that I, I've kept a very close hold on to this day, and, and I will be continuing uh, the rail graphic novel and, and those storylines very, very soon, and we can get into that in a little bit. Okay. Um, and then uh, I did a lot of Marvel cards. I did a lot of DC cards. Uh, at one point, DC asked me to do a full set uh, for them, but we came into some creative differences on what they wanted to do with the set and what I wanted to do, so. So it never fleshed out? It sort of fell apart. Uh, some of the artwork that I did eventually turned up in another set, um, but it was, it was a disappointment because I've been a Batman fan since I was a kid. Yeah. And um, it would have been fun to have a, a good body of Batman work, you know, live in that world for just, yeah, you yeah. know, for about a, half a year sure. uh, doing some stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, I get, got involved with the Aliens uh, material from Dark Horse, and that's been a big part of, of what I've done over the past 20 years. Which everybody who shops here knows that I am a huge Aliens <laughs> collector. So to be sitting here with a guy that painted the cover for Tribes and the, what did you do, like two dozen pictures for that prose? That was... uh, for, for Tribes, there's 24 pieces, right. uh, illustrated novel. Yeah. Uh, it was a big uh, uh, ex experiment for Dark Horse. Uh, no publisher had really done anything like that mm -hmm. uh, in, in modern times. And I wanted to do an illustrated book. I wanted to do an illustrated book for a long time, but we didn't know if there was a market for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and certainly if we wanted to do 
something like the N.C. Wyeth or, or Howard Pyle books of, of the 1920s and 1930s. Those right. were like, you know, big, thick novels. Yeah. And uh, those are classics, you know, reprints of classics and stuff. And, and uh, you know, that's hard to do in today's market. And the publishers don't want to take that chance with, uh, you know, mainstream novel with illustrations. So yeah. uh, it, it's all, it had always been something in the back of my head. And after the success of, of Star Wars and Indiana Jones and, and um, uh, the success that they had with uh, um, Mark Nelson's Alien series to right. start out and, and some of the other miniseries after that, um, yeah, I, uh, Aliens versus Predator was really big from the film. That Norwood. was that Phil was a, Norwood yeah. uh, worked on that, and yeah. that was actually one of my first uh, Aliens versus Predator pieces. Was from Dark Horse Presents, where they had a preview yeah. of of that uh, uh, Aliens versus Predator miniseries. Um, so that was like a, a landmark, you know, for me uh, getting yeah. involved in that. Yeah. Uh, that was my first uh, uh, sort of sort of Alien piece. Because uh, even though it was supposed to be, you know, Predator being the focus, still had the aliens in there. Sure. Um, Which aliens are better, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Star Trek versus Star Wars. Yeah, the age no, no, There's the gonna... aliens versus Predator. No, I'm not putting you on the spot. No, <laughs> no, <I'm not> gonna... <laughs> Um, um, so uh, anyway, I, we approached, uh, uh, or I approached uh, Dark Horse about doing an illustrated book, mm -hmm. and they thought that it was a, a good idea. And uh, I hooked up with my friend Steve Bissett, who I had known from the Kubert School. Right. And uh, he had uh, an interest in writing it, because I'm not a writer, I'm, I'm an illustrator. So we worked together in, in uh, uh, developing the story. Uh, I designed characters. Uh, we had some real fun working it out. He eventually wrote a story that was twice as long as, as the, the, the book, book would fit. So we had to pull a lot of stuff out, which was real hard. But that happens, you know, in, yeah. in this business. And, uh, you know, I spent uh, about half a year doing illustrations, and I consider that still to be a high point in my career. It's gorgeous is, is work. That book. Gorgeous well, thank work. Thank you very yeah, much. It's a gorgeous work. Um, yeah. yeah. If I, if I could, I, I, would, I would, you know, like to have the, uh, a, <laughs> at least a lithograph of the big queen from the cover of that book. It's uh, good stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, see something about, uh, doing something about that. So, um... Getting on, uh, well, you, this is a good segue. You did some work on Dark Horse Presents, which is one of Dark Horse's sci-fi anthologies, which they just started doing up again. Right. Um, now, let's talk about some of the new stuff you got coming out, because on the topic of anthologies, you're going to be working okay. on um, Monster Massacre. Monster Massacre. My friend Dave Elliott, who right. I've known since uh, a million years ago. As a matter of fact, he um, uh, edited a series called A1, uh, first for English Publisher and then for Epic uh, Comics. Uh, he did four issues of that. And, right. and uh, you know, once again, I had an opportunity to do a story set in my Wasted Lands universe. Mm -hmm. and, and Dave said, you know, love to have you. Do whatever you want. So I did a small... Uh, story for uh, Wasted Lands and nice. uh, uh, put it in there. And uh, I also did a, a, a separate cover uh, featuring uh, uh, Clive Barker's Nightbreed uh, characters. Uh, That's when it was still under Epic, yeah? That was Epic Magazine. Yeah. Excuse me, that was Epic Magazine, yeah. not A1. Yeah. Um, but that was along the same time period. Big that, Epic fan. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a good magazine. It's unfortunate that, uh, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, just, and, and all the books that they put out in that period, because that was like their yeah. creator own. Um, yeah, um, it was. Like Alien Legion, John Bolton, and. Um, yeah, Six from Sirius. Six from Sirius. And, and, and stuff, yeah. Black Dragon. Was, yeah, so those, those are good books. Yeah. Very good books at that time. And um, so anyway, Dave Elliott, I've had a relationship uh, with him for many, many years. And he recently, uh, he's, he sort of stepped back from doing publishing into editing and doing some uh, management and creative uh, uh, things behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Now he's back in the forefront uh, editing and putting together books for, for his company, Atomica Press, which Titan is going to be uh, producing uh, uh, in England. And they're, they're going to be coming over here, right. distributed over here as well. So he asked me if I'd be interested in, in uh, doing a, a story for Monster Massacre, which is his horror anthology mm -hmm. book. And of course I said yes. Right. Uh, and I was thinking of a couple of things to do. And, and I, I had created a motorcycle zombie called Hitch back with um, uh, Gary Reed at Caliber Comics uh, for his Dead World book. He had... Uh, he did some really fun stuff way before Walking Dead yeah. uh, with the Dead World uh, uh, zombie stuff. And he 
at one point was putting together an anthology of various people uh, uh, just adding their little bits to the Dead World, World thing. And I said, you know, I'd, I'd love to participate, but I can't, I really can't do a story. Um, he said, well, you know, just draw us a character to, you know, that we could sort of put on this montage cover that we're doing. And I said, sure, no problem. So I created this character, called him Hitch, and they put it on the cover. And then it just got me thinking about what the character was and, and uh, uh, how he's going to relate. Because he's sort, sort of you know, still uh, partially human, so he was still a sentient zombie. Right. But you know, he was still decaying. And, and uh, <laughs> he, was, he was living in a world where because you know, he was part zombie, the humans were trying to kill him. And because he was still part alive, the zombies were trying to kill him. <laughs> so, you know, it, it made for some interesting story ideas. And um, uh, in the late 90s, uh, I worked with a writer friend of mine, Del Stone, uh, who created a couple of prose um, uh, short stories featuring the character Hitch, which we eventually combined into a short novel called Dead Heat, uh, which I will be... Uh, it, it came out for sale, and, the, and then the publisher went bankrupt. Story of my life. <laughs> um, but I, I have boxes of, of the books uh, stored away that this summer I'm going to put it back uh, on, on the website, make it for sale. Um, so people who uh, might be interested, uh, check my blog or, or check my website or my Facebook uh, page, and uh, they'll have, we'll be putting together an announcement probably within the next week or two about the Dead Heat novel and, and where it can be uh, uh, basically ordered directly from me. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the Hitch character has sort of been uh, uh, in my head, bouncing around a little bit, and then yeah. when uh, Dave Elliott said, uh, got this horror anthology, and I said, okay. So I pulled Hitch out and uh, uh, created a 10-page story of, of him um, getting caught in the middle of Kansas in this dust storm and having this crazy dream sequence and, and finding out that... Um, uh, you know, he, he, once he was, uh, became undead, sort of, yeah. um, he could think, but he, he had never dreamt before. And so this is him sort of, sort of evolving as, as an, an undead creature okay. um, by, by having this dream. And it's a really funny dream. You'll have to see it. I'm not yeah, going oh, yeah. to give it away. No, no, no. But Don't do that. Uh, okay. we, it, want, we want people to yeah. lie. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, um, Monster Massacre uh, coming out, I believe it's going to be in November. Uh, September. Uh, September. September, yeah. Uh, uh, Dave Elliott will have a booth in San Diego, and he will have samples uh, there. So definitely uh, either come by my booth and take a look at it or you know, go by Dave's. And probably before uh, before it comes out, we'll tease it a little bit on on Facebook and and on the blog as well. Is it um, fully painted story? Uh, this is a little bit different for me because I, I've I've experimented a little uh, on the techniques uh, of storytelling. So um, it's a panel a panel by panel story. Uh, it's a, a traditional comic approach mm -hmm. uh, as far as basic storytelling goes, but I've colored it in a number of, of different ways. I've painted, physically painted whole panels. I've done like a blue line technique where you still see the black line, but there's color uh, underneath that. Uh, some of the color's flat, some of it's fully painted. Okay. Uh, some of the things I've done were in the computer where I've dropped out the black line or made it a different color. Um, uh, so I, I really t t took a chance in experimenting um, from what I've known uh, and experienced through peers th that I see at shows and talk to them about how they're doing comics right. now because I haven't done a whole lot of it, and, and, but I'm still trying to keep my, my hand on the pulse of what's <laughs> being done, especially with the, the digital technology. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I've been incorporating some of those things into this hitch story to, to see how comfortable I could be, you know, still um, working in a traditional continuous panel uh, storytelling, but doing something different uh, artistically uh, to make it um, non-traditional. Gotcha. So it, it was really fun, and I think when you eventually see the final version uh, that's printed, you'll see it's a little bit different than, than the normal comics that, that you see. 
a uh, little bit more painterly. You still see a little bit more of, of my painter in uh, the story, right. along with the uh, traditional black line uh, drawings. Okay. And one of the other things I did, uh, because I like doing single illustrations, is 90% of the story, uh, each panel I drew separately, brought into Photoshop, and then built the pages from there. Okay. So I had an opportunity uh, to sometimes zoom in on an image if I wanted it a little bit more dramatic, or I could tilt it. Uh, so I wasn't restricted to penciling a whole page and then inking it and having those images as what it is. That's it, yeah. Yeah, I was right. able to have you know five images all separated, and I could put them in. I could I could overlap them if I wanted mm -hmm. to, or I could like cut out half of it if I didn't need part yeah. of it, or or what. So it was really interesting. It's like like a film editor, you know, taking bits and pieces, putting it together to tell um, maybe a little bit more of a story than when I mentally laid out the page right. to begin with and started doing the drawings. Digital, digital medium, I mean. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> uh, that was uh, a, a real interesting way to approach it, rather than sketch out a full page, blow it up, draw the full page, and then ink a full page. Right. Because you're, you're very much limiting yourself to your approach on that. So it was, it was, it was great fun to do it. You know, unfortunately, I was under a very big deadline, so it was very, <laughs> it's very stressful. I, fin I finished it the day before we came out here to California, actually. Oh, okay. So it's still hot off the drawing, ta uh, the drawing table. All right. Um, and uh, it, it was great fun, and uh, Dave Elliott really liked it. He's really looking forward to having it as part of, of the project. And, uh, uh, you know, I, you know, honestly, I look forward to doing more of that type of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I... I love comics, and I know it's not my strong point. Yeah. But when you do something like this, that's so much fun. Yeah, you really think, well, you know, maybe I should do it a little bit more. I mean, you know, that's like a self-discovery <laughs> self thing too. I mean, like you see, you're more prone to doing illustrations. It's very comfortable, but you're, you yeah. discovered something. So, and we don't have to pigeonhole ourselves right. as creators to, you know, you have to do it this way. You know, there. Right. With, with, like with how to draw the Marvel way, whatever. <laughs> 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 Screw that book. <laughs> oh, I don't know. John B. Seema did some really, uh, really cool stuff. Oh no, no, uh, yeah, yeah, he did do some good yeah, stuff. But so. I was thinking, like, there's, no, like, I, especially yeah, with the digital medium. I mean, there's yeah. like, you know, I mean, you can, it's, yeah. it's, it's open, open yeah, season. It, it, yeah, the the styles that that the artists are doing today combination of things you know the young artist I see at San Diego every yeah. year uh, just some amazing artwork that's being done you know both in, in comic books and illustration now yeah so you know I feel pushed to, to you know be a little bit better as well and, yeah yeah uh, and you know and you just you're like you said you discovered like some new stuff and yeah. you know how to how to work with the art and mix it up in the yeah in Photoshop a little bit it's always yep. It's good. It's, it's very good. true. Yeah. Very true. Uh, Dave, it looks like we're out of time here. These guys are giving me the wave off. So, I would you mind that. sticking around? We can talk a little bit more about some other talks that we didn't have a chance to cover. I got a few more minutes. I All can right. Do that. So, you guys be sure to stop by C2E2 and find his uh, artist out table and, and go and buy, grab a sketchbook and some good stuff from Dave. All right. Slice of sci fi.com.